Hey guys, so Assetto Corsa Competizione was recently released in PS5 native mode. What I thought would be really interesting to put to the test is whether or not the force feedback feels re relatively comparable between PS5 and the PC version of the game. This is a question that comes up a lot. Can a console sim racing experience come close to a PC sim racing experience? Now obviously there's a lot of talk about graphics, sound quality, things like that. The focus of today's video is purely just on the feeling of force feedback feedback that you get through the wheel. We're going to be using exactly the same hardware for both, so the only difference is going to be one test will be with a PS5, one test will be with a high-end sim racing PC. So let's see what happens. So I'll just quickly run you through the hardware that we're going to be using for today's test, just so you've got a complete picture here. So we've got a BenQ 4K gaming projector behind me. That is a TK700 STI. We're running a Next Level Racing FGT Elite cockpit here with a Fnatic GT DD Pro wheelbase. In terms of the wheel, we're going to be using a Fnatic R300 with a button module endurance. Flip it around to the back, we've got a uh, podium paddle module here, as well as a podium hub. So we'll chuck that on the wheelbase in just a moment. And uh, yeah, let's have a quick look at the settings that we're gonna be running in terms of the game as well. Starting off with PC, that's gonna be the benchmark. And then we'll switch across to PS5 in just a moment. So we'll quickly jump down to options here and go into controls. And we can see here all of our options for configuring our force feedback. So we've got our force feedback gain set to 100 here. We also do have it set to 100 in the tuning menu on the wheelbase too. We are gonna be running exactly the same tuning menu settings between both the PS5 and the PC, just for reference, just to keep it nice and simple. Uh, so we are running at the full eight Newton meters here. We are running the Boost Kit 180. I should have mentioned that before. So minimum force set to zero, damper set to zero, dynamic dampening set to 100. Road effects we found 70 seem to feel about best for us. And you can see here, we have a frequency adjustment of 400 hertz. That means that the force feedback signal is actually being updated 400 times per second. Now, when we switch across to the PS5 in a moment, you'll notice that that setting is not present. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how that compares on PS5. So let's jump back out of this menu and we'll go into single player. We're gonna do the McLaren 720S GT3 around Spa, most familiar track for me, so I thought it makes sense to do that. We're starting at 9 a.m. with a time multiplier of one. If we go into assist, you can see I've got all the assists turned off in terms of car handling, so no ideal line, no stability control, gearbox is manual, all these other things won't matter for what we're doing. Uh, if we go into realism as well, you can see damage rate set to zero. I've also set tire wear to zero as well, just so we've got a bit more apples and apples between the two. I uh, didn't want to have any more variables than what we really needed to. Brake temperature I have left enabled just because that's kind of fundamental to driving in ACC. We're back out of that menu too. And otherwise you can see weather and track conditions. We've got dynamic weather turned off clear conditions, so that will be the same. Grip level set to fast, and we'll set this up exactly the same in the PS5 as well. Now, we're not really focusing on lap times so much as just what we're feeling through the wheel. All right, so setup-wise, we're just gonna run the default safe preset here, just so everything's exactly the same for both sessions. Obviously, you can go a lot faster than what you're gonna see here with custom setups and with more skill than I have, but again, this is all just about what we're feeling through the wheels. So let's hit back here, and let's head out onto the track. So, it's been a hot minute since I've driven a Fnatic wheelbase in ACC on a PC. See how familiar this feels. I've been running with my Simicube 2 Ultimate for the video series that we've been running, the hyper-realistic ACC video series, which you should definitely check out if you haven't seen. Running that in our crazy 365-inch 4K rig. I'm trying to make the videos look as lifelike as we possibly can. So, anyway, talking about the force feedback in ACC. Now, a lot of people consider this game to have the best quality force feedback out of all the sim titles. I don't really want to get involved in that debate today. Not really what we're talking about, but one of the things that I always really enjoy about the force feedback in ACC is just how granular it is. And what I mean by that is you really do feel a lot of very fine detail. And a lot of that is purely down to the fact that the force feedback engine does run at very, very high refresh rates, as we saw before, 400 hertz now used to be 333, I think, but in a more recent update, they upped it. Now, if you compare that to iRacing, for example, that runs at 60 hertz, so you get a lot less update intervals, which means it doesn't have that same level of granular feel to it that we get in ACC. Now, again, there's a lot of other variables, and I'm certainly not saying that one's better than the other, they're just different from each other, but in ACC, what I feel here through the CSL DD Pro, or the uh, 
GT Diddy Pro, I should say, other than a whole bunch of understeer, is a lot of really fine detail. So when I run up on ripple strips, I get a nice sort of buzz through the wheel. It feels quite authentic. I get a good sensation of when I'm running up on curbs. I can kind of feel the weight of the car moving around underneath me. Even though I'm used to running a D-Box motion system, we obviously don't have that running here on the rig at the moment. When I ran over that little patch of grass there, which was intentional, I assure you, um, you know, you could feel the divot in the ground. You could feel the, the surface difference. And all those little details are the things that I personally feel are very well communicated in ACC. So we're up into almost optimum pressure range now on the tires. Let's brake nice and early here. One thing I didn't mention before, we're running the CSL, uh, the CSL pedals with the load cell. Not, I keep on wanting to say CSL Elite, but CSL pedals with load cell. Not really relevant for this video, but just so you know, that's what we're running. So let's try and pick up the pace a little bit now. Again, I'm not expecting to be setting any PBs here because it's very unfamiliar equipment, but this is all just about what I'm feeling. So run over that little ripple there too, and you really get a good sense. You can feel the car kind of bumping up over that sausage curb. Really good sensation. And these are the things that I'm expecting we may not get quite the same amount of finesse and definition on the PS5. But even just a little you know, the texture of the road, was hitting little tiny bumps and feeling the balance of the car. All those little details are very, very well pronounced. Get it turned in. Oh, the setup's very different from what I'm used to. <laughs> the back end's not nearly as compliant, but at least it's not sliding around all over the place, I suppose. You can see the little micro corrections that I'm making through the steering there. there partly in response to overdriving the car a little bit, but also just in response to bumps in the track surface and you know little details like that. A little wide there. Get it turned in, come on. Yeah, good amount of definition there as we run up on the curbs. Try to use as much of the track as I can. Back off the throttle just a little bit here. Still getting quite a bit of understeer. It's much more understeer setup than what I'm used to. But I guess to, to summarize the feeling here, I, I'm feeling all the little details that I need to sort of, I guess, get a sense of what the car is doing. The, the front to rear grip transition does, or the balance transition does feel really good as well. So I get a good sensation through the wheel of how the car is responding to my inputs in that regard as well. A little bit late on the brakes there. Get it turned in and power down. So on turn in with this, with this setup, the car is quite understeer. And then as you start to get the power down, as you sort of overcome the ability of the rear tires, you feel the back end sort of start to try and push and you get a little bit of push, a little bit of push understeer with this setup as well, but you do start to get a little bit of oversteer, a little bit of breakaway in the rear end. We are running the traction control quite high here as well at TC level six, which obviously makes it a little bit more stable, but we don't want to mess around with setups and adjustments here because we want to have apples and apples with their testing. But yeah, there is a good, there is a good sense of balance in the car as well. And that's communicated well through the steering. So what I want to do now is pump out a couple of quicker lap times here while I'm sort of not having to concentrate on what I'm saying, because obviously things like that happen when I'm trying to talk and drive. So I'll pump out a couple of laps here. We'll, uh, we'll show you the fastest lap and then we'll switch over to the PS5 and see what we can do there.
Right, so we did a quick seven laps there. Fastest lap that I did without an off track was a 225.695. I know that's not lightning pace by any means. Not really the focus of today's video, but it will be interesting just to sort of see whether I'm at least in the same kind of ballpark on the PS5. So let's switch over now and see how the experience compares. So switched over to the PS5. Now you can see a couple of differences in the menu here in terms of what options are available. We've got everything set up exactly the same way in terms of the options that we do have available to us to what we had on the PC though. Now we did spend quite a bit of time experimenting, tweaking settings, particularly in the settings menu or the tuning menu on the wheelbase itself. Just trying to make sure we were bringing out as much detail as we possibly could, and uh, you know, to just as closely match the experience to the PC as what we could. And we found that, you know, running pretty much the same settings here was, you know, ultimately the closest that we could get it. So it does seem to be, you know, pretty apples to apples in that regard. There wasn't a setting that we were able to adjust on the PS5 that was able to bring in detail that we felt was missing from PC. But we'll talk about that in just a moment. So you can see gain here once again set to 100. So we are running the full 100 Newton meters. We've got that set to 100 in the tuning menu as well. Minimum force at zero, exactly the same as it was. We did have a damper adjustment on the PC, which we don't have here, although we did have that set to zero on the PC. So that shouldn't be a significant difference. Dynamic dampening at 100%, just like it was road effects at 70% exactly the same once again we don't have that adjustment here for the frequency or the refresh rate now I believe that because we're running at 4k 60 here the uh, force of feedback effects will also be running at 60 Hertz but I'm not absolutely 100% certain on that I haven't actually been able to find any documented information on that so if you do know and you can correct me on that let us know down in the comments and then all the other settings here are exactly the same so we'll back out of that Okay, so everything is set up as close as we can possibly make it here. Field of view looks very similar as well. So let's head out and see how we go. It's actually surprising at a glance how similar the graphics actually do look on the PS5. There's obviously a lot of little subtle differences in some of the shadows and volumetric uh, fogs and things like that. But immediately, I'm feeling a little bit more robotic nature in the force feedback. It feels a little bit more numb around the center. Let's get it turned. Like the resistance just isn't quite as strong as it was from the PC, which is interesting because we've got all the strength settings set exactly the same way, but you can see I'm a lot more unstable here, missing my apexes. And this is with the muscle memory that I literally just sat on the PC. So it's like for like in that regard, I'm sort of jumping out of one and directly into the other with only about a minute and a half in between just to set things up. But I should adjust to this pretty quickly, but there is still a lot of detail there, but it does feel more robotic than it did on the PC. Now. I would imagine that is probably just down to the refresh rate as we were discussing being 400 hertz on the PC. And I'm guessing 60 hertz on the PS5, but again, don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% certain. If any of you guys do know, definitely let us know in the comments. But there are definitely some differences there. It is good. There is still a lot of detail there, but there's just a little bit less. Well, I wouldn't say a little bit less. There's noticeably less definition overall in the force feedback. Now, is it enough that it's going to, I mean, is, is it enough that I would say, oh, it's just not as good on PlayStation as it is on PC? Because you don't have that granular detail to the same extent that you did on the PC, it definitely is an inferior experience to the PC, but that's not to say that you wouldn't be able to adapt to it and still go very far. So it's certainly not to the extent where I would say, oh, forget about PS5 altogether. If you want to do, if you want to go proper sim racing, which, you know, ACC is considered a proper sim racing title. So really the question that we're asking here is, can you have a proper sim racing experience on a PS5? And I'd say the answer to that question is yes. This is, you know, this, this, this is giving me all the detail that I need. It's just not quite as good as it was on the PC. So 
what I'll do is I'll turn a couple of laps here now. Try to try to get a bit more of a feel for it. See how my lap times compare as well. And then as I kind of analyze what's going on a little bit more and play around with some settings a little bit more as well, we'll, we'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll do a bit of a summary. So there are a couple of interesting observations here. I put the same number of laps in here on the PS5 as I did on the PC. And remember that I was using a wheel, pedal, and you know combination of hardware that I'm not used to, I don't have muscle memory with. So if anything, you would expect that I would be faster as I had more and more experience on the PS5, given that I already had the experience and familiarity with the PC. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case for the PS5. I actually ended up being about two seconds slower on my fastest lap over that seven lap stint for valid lap times at least, and about a second slower on the invalid laps too. Now, I'm putting the reason for that down simply to just not having the same level of detail in the force feedback that I felt on the PC. On the PC, I just felt like there was a lot more finesse, a lot more fine and granular detail in the force feedback than what I was getting with the PS5. Now, we did spend quite a bit of time dialing in, changing settings, and just trying to tune that in. But for me, what it boils down to is that detail just doesn't appear to be there like it is on the PC. Now that's not to say that the experience isn't great on PS5 as well. So if you, if the best you have is a PS5 and you're wanting to get into sim racing, then absolutely give it a try. I think that, you know, having a good quality wheel like this does still give you the strength. It does still give you the, you know, the feeling of the car moving around. Just doesn't quite have that detail and the ability to sort of really feel at a granular level exactly what's going on with the car in the background. So what I say, is it a proper sim? Well, I mean, I guess it really just boils down to what your expectations are. All we're really looking at here is purely just force feedback. There's a lot of other aspects here as well, like physics, game engine. They have said that the physics, at least as far as the car is concerned, is the same as it is on console, on PC. There's a lot of other factors there to consider as well, like you know what kind of league structure is there on PlayStation compared to PC. There's a million things that we could dive into. We're not gonna go into those things in today's video. But for me at least, I would say that the force feedback is superior on PC to what it is on PS5 given the same hardware. And that is my honest experience. So if you do have experience with both a console and PC title on the same hardware, let us know what you think in the comments down below. Do you agree with my observations or has your experience been somewhat different? Maybe you've put a lot more time into it than I have. Have you been able to match your times on console to what you can on PC? I'm sure that there'll be plenty of people out there that once they really dial in, they really sort of start to adjust to what they're getting, then they could be just as fast. I'm certainly not wiping that off the table altogether. I'm not saying that you would be faster on PC than on console or all the time. I'm purely saying that when it comes to the granular detail that is necessary to really dial in, really feel exactly what's going on with the car, there is more of that there on the PC than there is on the PS5, at least in my experience. So I really hope that today's video has been interesting for you. Hopefully it's helped you out as well. If it has, leave a thumbs up. Let us know that you've enjoyed the video. Make sure that you're subbed as well so you don't miss future content. If you're keen on ACC content, we will be back very soon with another hyper-realistic ACC video over in the 665-inch 4K rig as well. So stay tuned for that one. But thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.